Hello lovelies, it's Leslie. Not quite enough willpower when I go to yarn shops. Oh dear, how sad, never mind. I had a, I've had a great week so far. It's only Sunday as I'm recording this section and um, lots to say. So Friday, I met with Joelle and Merwood. Joelle is a regular viewer of the podcast and Merwood is also because Joelle's watching it. So thanks guys. <laughs> and Joel got in touch a while ago to say they were coming to the UK. Would it be possible to meet up? Absolutely delighted to do so, but for a long time I couldn't commit to anything because I didn't know what was happening with my dad and all of, you know, where he was going to be and what my commitments would be. So it was very kind of short notice when I said, yeah, I'm sorry it's been so long, I can meet you and when are you free over those days, you know, so. So they were free on Friday and offered to come down to the seaside. However, there were rail strikes. Um, the A number of unions are, are on strike at the moment and they were not working. The trains weren't working to here. They offered to hire a car, but that, that seemed far too much. And um, it was just kind of easier to kind of logistically to drive to the outskirts of London and then some of the trains are working, so it depends which union the drivers are in and the ancillary workers are in. Um, so I could then get a train from the outskirts of London in and said, initially I said about meeting them in Richmond, I thought we could go to Richmond Park. At that point I thought Tribe Yarns was still in Richmond, but they're actually now in Scotland, in Fife, so that wouldn't be convenient from Richmond Park. <laughs> And I said, well, if you fancy going east and not west, we could meet in Hackney and go to Wild and Woolly. They were happy to do that, so that was great. So I had the dog in day and overnight care because I didn't know how long, um, how late I would be coming home. And set off. Now, according to the sat-nav, it was going to take me an hour and a half to get to where I needed to be. And I'd booked to park the car on someone's drive. This is, you know, this is a scheme and uh, it was near the station, so good call, you know. Um, so an hour and a half, I thought, well, I've got plenty of time, that's okay. Also, I know that my sat nav tells lies because it told lies every single time I went to Stoke Mandeville by at least half an hour. I had actually allowed three hours for my journey because I just had a feeling, because it's the jolly old M25, and also because the trains were on strike, more people were going to be using their cars than would normally be, be on the road. So I thought, okay, allow plenty of time, rather be there early than, than be rushing. Got to just where I was going on to the M25, and it started to slow up, and we came to a stop. And then you realise that nothing's coming in the other direction, on the, the opposite carriageway. And then you see the smoke ahead. Like, oh, I can see why we've all stopped, because there are blue lights and there's smoke. And um, it look, No ambulances were required, thankfully, so hopefully there was nobody hurt um, in either instant. I say either instant because there were two cars that if you look at the two cars, they looked as if they could have just gone into each other, but they were on separate carriageways and there was no sign of one having gone across to the other side of the road. So whether they'd both hit carriageways, whether they'd both hit the cars in front of them, whether there'd been one accident and people rubbernecking on the way past and that caused a second, I don't know. I was just getting to the point where I was thinking, okay, if I turn off here, can I get round that way? You know, all the things you start going and then we started to move again. So so that was good. So it actually took me two and a half hours rather than an hour and a half. But got there safely, parked up and the, the parking on someone's drive scheme worked fine. I was panicking. Have I got the right address written down? You know, you don't want to get home and there's someone get back and there's someone very irate because they've got home from work and there's your car on their drive, you know, but that all worked fine. So. Once I got there, it was all running smoothly, got to Hackney, met with Joella Merwood, and um, we went to Wild and Woolly. Now, I uh, was using a map, 
and was getting very confused and lost. So Joelle got her phone out and gave us the directions from there. I've done this before. Um, I shouldn't be trusted with finding the way to anywhere. Um, <laughs> so we went to Wild and Woolly. They had a fantastic display on the outside um, in their window of the tube map made of I-cord. And we did check with the uh, the lovely people in the shop. You know, you did do that using a mill, didn't you? You weren't manually, you know, three needles making an I-cord. And they said, no, they used a mill. And I thank goodness for that. So it's a nice yarn shop and be rude not to so i bought some yarn and let me just find the yarn i bought there this is from wool kitchen and i have some wool kitchen yarn in my stash and this is called the reverse pops gray so you can see why i just thought it was really pretty i will go through all this in a lot of detail for month end but we've got lots of pops of neons here along with this dark these dark patches and it's uh, a sock yarn, a 75% BFL, 25% nylon. So, rather lovely yarn. The lady in Wild and Woolly said, have you also been to Knit With Attitude? And we thought, no, we haven't. And she told us how to get there. Now, himself had been to both shops and to walk between them is quite a way, but on a bus, it's quite straightforward. So she said, right, bus stop opposite, number 106 bus, told us where to get off. So we got on a bus. One came along pretty quickly. Whilst we were on the bus, we exchanged some gifts, which was very kind. So Joel owns a yarn shop. This is the Three Kittens Knitting Shop. I will put her card here. So if you're in Ohio, near her shop, she would be delighted to see you. And she gave me some really cute point protectors and some lovely yarn and this is by uh, Misfit Yarns and it's the Mi Misfit Sock in the Girl Gang colourway you can see what she thought of me can't you <laughs> so really lovely very kind of her because she knows me well we also have chocolate and I wasn't the only one bought a gift because she also bought treats for my little friend. So we have a large filled bone here. We have these wonderful Halloween dog treats, spooky biscuits, and we have canine carryouts, taco minis. So let's see if we can tempt Madam with one of these, shall we? Heidi. Gently. She always takes her treats away to eat them. I don't know if she thinks I'm going to take them back or something, but but yes, she's uh, oh she's enjoying that. That's good. So thank you, Joelle from Heidi. <laughs> so we then went to knit with attitude. Another very nice yarn shop. This one is in Stoke Newington. It's about five, ten minutes by bus from Wild and Woolly in Hackney. And um, people in there, very nice. And they were having a conversation about needles and about uh, whether you like wooden needles or metal needles or any other type of needles. And obviously I'm very shy and retiring, so I decided to join in their conversation. And then the customer said oh you should be recording this um and the owner of the shop for her social media was recording a few different opinions on what needles people prefer metal wooden and why and so forth so she asked if i would um repeat what i said <laughs> so that's what i did recorded and i'm now on their social media um <laughs> Now, it was a hot day. I looked a bit of a mess. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> if I cared about how I looked, I'd spend a lot more time preparing for podcasts. But, um, but yeah, I'll link to their Facebook and their Instagram below. As you can see, my interview. But, yeah, it was a slightly bizarre and surreal experience. But nice people in the shop. Very good fun. 
and again i thought well it'd be really rude not to buy something having come this way having chatted i really ought to buy something and they have a good selection of dyes as do wild and woolly and this is a dye that i haven't i've heard the name but i haven't um had any of their yarn before this is twisted ambitions yarn it's a merino nylon uh sock yarn and as it's in yards i think there may be a u.s dyer rather than a british one i'm not sure i will look that up before the month in podcast but it's this pretty yarn here so it's the tidal wave colorway so there are blue and teals with speckles in and then greys and whites as the other part of it so very pretty yarn so after that um we went along to a pub to get some lunch and Joelle and I both did some knitting. I did the ribbing on my mittens, my hand dyed, uh, hand spun, sorry. And then I realized I'd left my pattern at home. So I knew I needed to do 24 rows of one by one rib, but then couldn't remember what the next instruction was. So, but here's the rib. So this is how this yarn is knitting up. So we've got these flashes of white where the silk was in there but this is mostly coming up teal, but with a, a red base at the bottom. The second glove will have more red in it just because that's the way the, the colors have gone. So we sat there for quite a while and um, then we decided we'll, we'll head back towards Hackney, got on a 106 bus, entirely my fault, going the wrong way. <laughs> and we were a few steps along, I thought we're not going the right way. So, and we were sitting near the front, so I checked with the driver I said, which way are we going? Are we going to Finsbury? He said, yes. Oh dear. Sorry, guys. And at Finsbury, I said to um, Moad and Joel, there is, you know, you can get on the tube network here. Tubes are running fine. Um, if you want to go back to your hotel, I, you know, I'm, I completely understand. But they, um, we got on another bus and went back to uh, Hackney. And that's where we went our separate ways. So lovely day with them so that was friday um yeah so i then caught my train back to brentwood which is where i parked my car which is a uh, london essex border and my journey home was the hour and a half that the sat nav said it would be um because by this point it was kind of it was into the evening kind of half seven i think so that was a, a fairly straight run through so that was all good travel wise on the way home so that was friday yesterday yesterday was a work day um because friday i wasn't working yesterday i was working so so that was that was fine caught up with writing up and so forth and then today has been a, a no work day well i had to do a little bit this morning but nothing to worry about and um then i decided to go to the supermarket I thought I'd take the opportunity when I haven't got other commitments on my time. Had a little list with me. Got to the supermarket park to make sure I'd got the list with me, yes. Didn't have my purse. I'd put the list in my handbag, put my phone in my handbag, hadn't put my purse in my handbag. Purse being wallet, pocketbook, whatever you call it, wherever you are. But in the UK, the purse is the small thing that holds your cash and your cards and those sorts of things rather than your handbag which is what I know a lot of Americans uh, describe as a purse so sorry to be confusing but this is it so I thought oh dear and I thought well, I could go home and pick up my purse and come back again but I always keep um, a 20 pound note tucked into my phone case so that I'm never complete without cash so <laughs> I thought well I won't get everything on my shopping list I'll just get a few bits that I actually need so I did that and um, used the £20 cash. And it made me realise that I'm very fortunate because I was going around the store adding up in my head what I was buying to make sure that I was well within my £20. And conscious that, luckily, I don't have to do that often. Um, I'm very fortunate. I know there are lots and lots of people, especially the way the prices have gone up in the last year or two, where that is their normal and they are 
going around the um, supermarket either with a calculator or adding up in their heads to make sure that they keep within their budget. Yes, that includes dog food. Um, so, um, so I realised how lucky I am, and uh, gave a small donation to the homeless guy who was sitting outside because I was feeling very fortunate. So that was Sunday. So I got home with my, uh, and also of course it makes you realise what you actually need. You know, I, I did need milk because I don't drink my tea black. Um, but some of the other stuff on the list, if I didn't get it today, it didn't matter. So, so it was um, an interesting experience and a bit of a lesson, and one that it does no harm to learn every now and again. So we've got to Sunday evening, I'm about to feed the dog, don't tell her, and uh, take her out for a walk, and then it'll be an evening of knitting. I have finished the first sleeve of the test knit, I finished the second pocket, and I'm actually rethinking my colours. Because I'm not doing a test knit anymore, the original test knit was to have it in four colours, it doesn't matter if I only use three. I used, it seemed, a very small amount of my third colour in the sleeve and in the pocket. So I thought, well, I don't really need to break into another yarn. I could just have matching sleeves. So, of course, I'm you know, modifying the pattern in that sense because that's what I do, but this is possibly the first time I've ever knit something where I'm using fewer colours than the pattern suggests. It's good to make a change. Anyway, I've been prattling on for ages. I'll catch up with you later in the week. Cheers. Hello lovelies. Excuse the whirring sound in the background. I've got a fan going because it's got warm here. Of course it has. The kids are going back and I'm off to my dad's for a couple of days. Of course we're going to have extremely hot weather. <laughs> Himself has come back from being away for a few days and unexpectedly brought back goodies. So he had finished um, watching my nephew play golf. His tournament, his, his round finished sooner than expected. So himself came back with these beauties here. So these are by James C. Brett. It's called Shh, double knitting. Uh, it's an acrylic wool mix, 550 meters per 100 grams. Now it's classed as a, a, a double knitting weight and no doubt um, knits up to that, but it is fine. It is a sort of uh, a lightweight yarn and very pretty colors. We can see why he saw those and thought of me. So I've been spoiled. Bless him. Hello lovelies, it's Thursday. Um, got a ton of work to do. Back from Dad's, he's doing really well. Had some appointments to go to, so got those all sorted. And um, it's blinking hot here. There seems to be something about me staying at my Dad's <laughs> that means the sun's gonna come out. Maybe I should offer that as a service. If you're having a holiday in the UK and you want really sunny weather, get me to go and stay at my dad's it's fine so, so i hope you've all had a good week and what have i got coming up a quieter one next week um and then i'm away next weekend looking after uh dog sitting for my sister's little dog so that will be week after next but take care everyone thanks for being here look after yourselves thanks for your comments and thoughts and i'll see you soon cheers bye bye